Hurricane Harvey puts Houston residents at risk of deadly diseases and snake bites. Everybody back safe. As if having their homes destroyed by Hurricane Harvey this week wasn't enough, Houston residents now have a whole other set of problems to deal with. Some of these are deadly and some may well even bite. Houstonians impacted by the flooding may be at risk of bacterial infections, several diseases, as well as snake and insect bites. Open wounds exposed to Houston floodwaters put people at risk of contracting bacterial infections such as tetanus and even the sometimes deadly skin infection Vibrio. Experts warn that instances of mosquito transmitted viruses such as Zika and dengue fever may rise in the aftermath. Another health risk Houstonians could face is bites from displaced venomous snakes. And that's just scraping the surface of what dangerous wildlife may be roaming the streets. The area is also home to bobcats, coyotes, foxes, and alligators. The world's full of nasty and horrible afflictions. Whatever you do, don't squeeze that tick. Oh joy. Thanks to an exploding mice population across the northeastern United States, this year looks like it's going to be a bumper one for the ticks that the rodents play host to. For those that don't know, ticks carry Lyme disease, which gives us humans rashes, swollen lymph nodes, and all sorts of other nasty symptoms. People living in areas affected by Lyme disease should check their bodies daily for ticks. And if you do find one, don't panic. Using tweezers, carefully remove the tick by pulling its mouth out of the skin. Do not squeeze the tick's body, as this can cause the contents of its stomach to burst onto the skin. Also, don't use petroleum jelly or smoke to remove it. Check with the Centers for Disease Control if Lyme disease is a problem in your area. Save the tick for lab testing, monitor your health, and if you develop symptoms of Lyme disease, consult a doctor. Around 30,000 cases of Lyme disease are reported in the U.S. each year, but health officials believe the true number to be 10 times that. So to avoid becoming another statistic, watch out for the little critters that spread the disease and know that Tomo News has got your back. How does sickle cell disease kill a person? Prodigy, one half of the rap and hip-hop duo Mob Deep, died Tuesday in Las Vegas at the age of 42 after being hospitalized for complications related to sickle cell anemia. Mob Deep is widely considered to be one of the most successful acts of all time, having released eight albums between 1993 and 2014. Prodigy, born Albert Johnson, had suffered from sickle cell anemia since birth. Sickle cell disease is a group of inherited red blood cell disorders. Two hemoglobin S genes need to be inherited, one from each parent, in order to trigger sickle cell disease. If both parents have the sickle cell trait, a child has a 50% chance of also inheriting the sickle cell trait, a 25% chance of being disease-free, as well as a 25% chance of inheriting the sickle cell disease. Hemoglobin is a protein that carries oxygen in red blood cells. Red blood cells that contain normal hemoglobin are disc-shaped, whereas sickle cell hemoglobin form long and inflexible chains. Normal red blood cells are flexible and can pass through both large and small blood vessels. Sickled red blood cells can stick to vessel walls, which can cause a blockage that stops oxygen delivery. Normal red blood cells can live up to 120 days. When the number of red blood cells decreases, the kidneys release erythropoietin hormones that stimulate bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. Sickled blood cells can only last up to 20 days due to their inflexible nature. The body of someone suffering from the condition often can't keep up with the fast pace of decreasing red blood cells, thus causing the person to suffer anemia. Anemia causes various organ damage over time, affecting the brain, heart, spleen, lungs, and kidneys, as well as the skin and bones. According to the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, most people with sickle cell disease are of African ancestry. About 1 in 13 African American babies is born with the sickle cell trait, and 1 in 365 black children is born with sickle cell disease. Kissing bug disease may cause more deaths than previously thought. A new study has found that Chagas disease may have been underreported as a cause of death. The study, conducted by researchers in Brazil, followed subjects for up to 14 years. Those with Chagas were two to three times more likely to die and 17 times more likely to develop cardiac disease. Chagas disease is transmitted by the triatomine bug, which is called the kissing bug because it bites sleeping humans near the eyes and lips. 
Kissing bugs defecate in or near the broken skin when they feed, transferring the Trypanosoma cruzi parasite into the bloodstream. Chagas causes flu-like symptoms that subside after a few months, but it can reappear years or decades later as heart disease. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimate that there are 300,000 cases of Chagas disease in the U.S. Most of these cases were contracted in other countries. The authors of the study found that Chagas was not reported as a cause of death in 42% of people in the study who died from cardiac disease, suggesting it has been underreported as a cause of death. Chagas has been identified by the CDC as one of five neglected parasitic infections that require public health action. Kissing bugs have been reported in 28 U.S. states, mostly in the South. Researchers find terrifying link between Alzheimer's disease and the very air you breathe. New research suggests there may be a connection between cognitive decline and heavily polluted air. According to U.S. researchers, elderly women who breathe polluted air, such as from car exhausts, have a higher risk of developing dementia and suffering cognitive decline. The research also suggests that women who carry the gene APOE4 have a much higher chance of developing Alzheimer's disease if exposed to similar air pollution. These dangerous particles are found in pollution from car exhaust fumes, power plants, and even burning wood. The research was led by the University of Southern California and published in the journal Translational Psychiatry.